Okay, synchronizing. This is example three of multiple connected bodies in English. This is another interesting problem uh, <coughs> where we have a body and which is connected by so so this is basically a frame uh, which is of uh, there is a T sort of thing uh, let me draw it here um, so there is a T and say so like that okay hmm. and then on the T on on the junction um, another bar is coming out like that okay. So that is the situation and I can show the axis maybe. So, so this is your z axis and maybe this line is your x axis and this is in the y direction. Okay. And now it is told that um, this point this bar over here is passing through a ring which is free to rotate okay it's a uh, first thing is the inside of the ring is smooth frictionless and the spring also can rotate freely on that small base okay and now here there is a ball joint ball and socket joint so that means here also it's frictionless and only reactions will come and not reaction moments. And now we are pulling this bracket or um, frame with a force 2 kilo Newton like this and it is stopped from moving by this cable CD. So this is a cable CD which is keeping this whole frame intact. Okay. And we are supposed to find out that tension T in the cable. Okay, now, so let the first thing is in such case to understand the connections, the connectors and to draw the forces that um, should be replacing these, these uh, connectors. Okay. Now let me first draw this force which was anyway the external force. So there is no <coughs> issue with that. But then what about at point B. See, um, the movement in the y direction is free. So there is no reaction coming from that. So only from X and Z, the forces will come. And to be consistent with the values here, um, let me draw them as, um, say, B, this is BZ and or, or see here I have taken in the opposite direction. So I will take that so that answer which I will get will match mm, <coughs> sign wise also. So this is BZ uh, and this uh, taken as BX. So there will be no force in BX direction. So that is very important and similarly there is no uh, rotational moment. See, uh, if it if the body tries to rotate about y axis, there is no friction. If it tries to rotate about um, uh, this z axis passing through that, that also is free. So, in fact, hmm, uh, so so this uh, and then because the thickness of the ring, it's called ring. So so the 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 joint the line that joins the ring with the bar it is just a single line so on this side that is about x axis also there cannot be any moment so that is how there is no moment involved here and similarly here in this point at the ball and socket joint we can have uh, reactions like say a a x coming from this side maybe mm. Ax. Similarly, 
a y coming from this side and a z coming from this side. Okay. So these are the forces and then there is a um, tension that tension will be in this direction somehow okay and which will come here and join somewhere here so this is the free body diagram of the frame okay now the point is um, we are supposed to find out this t so the uh, how you should think is which is a general technique basically that you should write um, the equation where most of the unknowns will get eliminated. Okay. Now, how, how do we do that? For example, here, what are the uh, unknowns? There are six unknowns, Bx, Bx, Bz and three unknown reactions here and tension T. This is the only force which is given. Okay. So then, um, the, the cleverest way is to take a moment about an axis which passes through these unknowns for example then then all the components will just vanish if i draw a line for example like this you know um, from here hmm oh uh, sorry this is a right so this is a to the point b so the line ab if i join and if i take moment about that then you see all these unknowns are gone we don't have to bother about them so that is the trick which you should learn from this problem and whenever such you should look for um, line segments which will eliminate most of the unknowns as many as possible from your equation now if we use that then straight away you can solve for t right okay now for do, taking a moment about that, what all do you need? Um, you will require, um, if you remember, how did we take the moment of a force about an axis? So now we have two forces, one is T, one is F. So we have to do that thing uh, twice. Okay, so let me. Hmm. Now how do we do that? Now. Uh, we, uh, if you remember that, so we had an axis and we had a force. So we were free to choose anywhere along the line there. Uh, and then, mm, that's bad. Uh, anyway, so this is R, this is F. So this R cross F we were doing and then N represents the axis direction and so we you, uh, used to take r crossed with f dotted with n right so that's how you evaluated that so here what should be done so these are the forces and this is the axis now the most natural point uh, to take the origin is this the the origin of the axis now R for this force, um, what should I take? Because see, if you, um, if you extend this force and it is coming and meeting somewhere here, right? At this location, this location it is meeting. So that means if I consider this, so that is the freedom. You remember I was talking about, you have got a freedom to choose this R from any point on the line on the axis to any point on the line of action of the force. So that is how you use this R1. Okay. Now similarly, so this, so this if you take R1, so one moment will be uh, say M1 uh, will be say R1 crossed with say T and I'll write it like that because T is the um, magnitude and small t with a hat is the unit vector in that direction and then this will give you 
this uh, moment uh, times n in this direction. So I will take dot with n. Okay. And similarly for m2, if I write m2, so, so this is magnitude, okay, so because this is a dot product, you understand what it means. m2 can be, you know, if I, sorry, draw this, so this can be your r2. Sorry. Okay, so this is say R2, then R2, I'll use the same color. So R2 crossed with F dotted with n sorry okay this if you do and then if you just have m1 plus m2 equal to 0 so that will give you t right so that's the only thing that you need to do and uh, shall i write what r1 r2 t you should get let me see uh, R1, what should be the R1? In You are moving in x direction by minus 1 unit. For example, say R1 is equal to minus 1i and you are coming in y direction by 2.5 meters um, plus 2.5j. So that is R1. And how much is R2? What is R2? Mm, yeah, from here to here, that means you are in x direction, you are coming 2.5 meters. So 2.5 i uh, plus how much you are going? 6 plus 6 uh, k. Right? So these are R1 and R2. And what is N? cap you can find that out right n cap is how much you have to come to b hmm. so to come to b you have to come 4.5 in y that means plus 4.5 j um, then yeah x is 0 so k plus 6 okay plus 6 k Okay, so this divide by its magnitude. Okay, if you do that, you will get n, and then f is what? Mm. F, sorry, f is known to be 2 times j, 2j, and only thing now remaining is t, isn't it? Everything else we have written r1, r2. F n now remaining thing is t and t how do you get um, from here you had to come 3 meters say let me write here um, t in 3 meters in x direction so 3 i then I'll have to uh, not 3 I think I had to come, you know, uh, this is one meter there, so two meters, isn't it? Mm. So you have to do two meters because you have to come only this much away. So this is one meter uh, to that side, this is three meters, so two. And then you have to come in y direction. 2.5 meters plus 2.5 uh, in j and in k you have to climb down by 6k okay so this uh, because it's a unit vector again you have to divide by 
its magnitude. Okay. I hope uh, the values are correct. Mm, just check them. Um, I hope they are correct. Okay. Uh, so you understand what I mean uh, when I do that. Even if some slight calculation mistakes are there, you can do that. It doesn't matter. Okay. So now once you do that, you can simply evaluate this equation. From there, you can evaluate T. And that T, you will come to this. Uh, 2.83 kilonewton. Okay. And once you have figured that out, uh, if you have to figure out the reaction forces, you can simply do that by um, taking either moment about this point, about A point or simply by, um, yeah, or uh, best thing is see, suppose you want to find out Bx, okay. Now think that you are taking a moment about uh, this axis uh, say z axis so all other things will just vanish z axis so then you have only bx and f and you are done okay so bx will come out to be i think uh, 0 0.417 i'll just write the answers 0 0.417 kilonewton bz will come out to be 4.06 kilonewton kilonewton and ax ay az then you can evaluate uh, from force balance okay so so that is how you should solve such problems and we will see in the next segment with another problem